the Redeemer of the United Methodist Church. Amen. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in Advent. Please read with me in the bold print the invocation as printed in your bulletin. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. I rejoice in the Lord who blesses us. Shout for joy, for the Lord is near. Our praise is ascending to God for the mighty things God has done. Let your praise dance and swirl in tribute to God. Surely God blesses and saves us. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. I would like to also ask if, they, if we have any visitors today, if you would be interested in standing and introducing yourself, we would love to meet you. Cheers. 
God is good? All the time. All the time? God is good. <laughs> so at this time, now, we're going to have our chancel chat. And you two can come up here and join us. You don't feel like you I don't feel like you're pressure. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing about the environment of church, you always want to see how, how people feel. It's like uh, when you're not under scrutiny. <laughs> so I have a question. Describe excitement. especially Sam Dallas. What a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful job that you've done in the basement. Mm -hmm. Redeemer offers the AA five days a week, and Sam really went out of his way to make sure that none of those meetings were disrupted. You know, we, we, they all took place. He worked around us, and you know, Sam, uh, I'm going to speak for everyone down there. Everyone loves it. Oh, everyone you. loves you. Thank you. Thank you. They're very important. It's very important. And Sam truly went out of his way to make sure that the meetings still went on. It's just gorgeous down there. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on in, Joyce. <laughs> it's all good. Um, uh oh. Come on, on. Sam. <laughs> and then I'll get to fellas. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I'd like prayers for um, my, my brother's partner in life, Charlotte Callahan. She is slowly losing her eyesight. Mm. It's a very tough thing for her, and uh, we don't know if it can be arrested or not, but uh, uh, she needs our prayers, and she needs God's help. Amen. I'm asking for traveling prayers for my daughter and son-in-law. They're driving from Florida up here for Christmas with a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Oh. Oh. They're not, but that's okay. <laughs> I also, strange request, I need to prayers for a little bit of snow because the four-year-old is just dying to see snow. She's never seen it before. So, thank you. <laughs> I want to um, footnote something before I also put those some names on on prayer list. Something that Patrick said um, about the work in the church, something that needs to be celebrated about Redeemer is that in your DNA here, Redeemer is a trait to give and to share. And so that basement is just uh, evidence of love and, and making that happen. Um, so yesterday, you know, the little brief um, words that I put into the bulletin cannot express, and there's not enough words in the lexicon to go ahead and tell you about the <coughs> tremendous joy that was experienced yesterday with the uh, skip ministry as well as later in the afternoon 
um, the Sigma Beta's uh, celebration upstairs. So we had two events uh, that focused on children. And one of the things that we always keep in mind is how that love transcends. And again, the subtleties in a world of chaos, how children can come to a church and say, you know what, if that's the only day of the week that they are in a church, at least they experience some sharing, some love, some hope, and joy. So that's a blessing that takes place here. Yes. I just want to say on behalf of uh, Skip and uh, everyone that was here yesterday, we just thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And uh, two of our Skip children are here today. And uh, I'm not going to put them on the spot again, but I'm sure their hearts are saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move this down here. I don't really need it either. I'm I know you don't. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say today's uh, a joy for today is that it's Fred's birthday. Oh. Happy birthday, Fred. Wow. We all know that song, too. Yeah. <laughs> Happy I got 40 cards yesterday from one of the girls I grew up with, and I found out that another one of my girlfriends that I grew up with has breast cancer. Hmm. So we want prayers for her. Name's Joanne. Frank. Okay. Okay. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, what a blessing. Um, you see there's some names that are on the prayer list. Um, there's some families that have uh, lost loved ones this particular week. And uh, there is a family on there, the Grand family, that is... Uh, very uh, close, that I'm close to, um, this uh, lady, Nina LeGrand, um, who passed, uh, was instrumental in Battle Creek of doing things for the community with the organization called Bridges for Cultural Understanding and always reaching out to find a, a gateway and a pathway through love and through God to bring people together and have that celebration. So we look up for the Grand family. Uh, my cousin's wife, Rita, is also on the prayer list. We want to keep her lifted. Uh, for health challenges, we want to keep you lifted. Amen for being here right now. Um, so at this moment, yes. I just want to lift up prayers for my sister. This is the first Christmas she's facing the mm -hmm. her husband. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's always a challenge. Everyone that's going through that right now on their first Christmas. Yes, you can come up and say to the hold on. Yes. We have to have a type of uh, love that explores these challenges in the human experience. But sometimes you're on a pace, you're on a track, and when these things happen, you go into a struggle. And it's also a time to cling, to reach out, turn to God, even more so. Um, because our human touch sometimes just doesn't lift us up enough. And we struggle with something that, again, everybody's experience is different. Everybody's experience um, touches the heart in unique ways. But God is with you. And that is important. Yes, Joyce. It's all right. Okay. All right. How are your sons? They're fine. Okay. I can talk loud enough. Okay. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. I just want us to 
uh, pray for Jessica Starr family, the yes. news reporter. Um, she seemed to be doing so good, and then all of a sudden, um, I guess she committed suicide. And they put the number on TV for other people to see it, because a lot of people are going through stress or whatever, and they don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And so um, she had, what, two kids and a husband, and mm -hmm. I know that's hard on her family. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for mentioning that. And that is also an opportunity to do this PSA. Um, so sometimes I, I'm a member of NAMI, which is the <laughs> National Alliance on Mental Illness. And some of the uh, things that I do, I post on Redeemer's uh, Facebook page. The reason why it is unfortunate that mental health challenges still have the stigma attached to it. See, it's interesting that somebody can walk in a room and say, I have diabetes. They'll say, oh, okay, uh, what kind of medication are you on or what are you doing? But nobody, like, lunges from you. But when you say mental illness, people think that you're in a world that can't be dealt with. And we don't understand what happens. It could be many issues that have taken people into this particular state. And so we need to embrace mental health challenges. It is and has been around for a long time. But because of the way society has treated it, and more often, it's impacting our youth. I know I shared a while ago, uh, even last year, that we have some close friends whose daughter took her life at the age of 14. And so you see things. Uh, in fact, one of the, um, at the Sigma party yesterday, there was a teacher here, and he said that they've already had two in their school suicides in a high school. So now that the school has decided to put inside of the school a psychiatrist, you see, children need an outlet because one of the things that's, um, that hurts is the fact when they feel they can't go and turn to anybody to talk about what's going on, as well as adults. And so it is important that we hear and at least be able to assist with a number or something to reach out and say, hey, I will try to find what you need. But um, it's that whole thing that some people just don't want to share the condition of what they have in their minds. Um, with that, we have a lot of people that are traveling. You know, the Rangers are on their way where they left. Uh, Friday to go down to South Carolina, so we want to continue to lift them up. Want to lift up Sandy, Shirley, continue to lift them up. Each of you, your hearts right now, and the love that you have for one another, let that penetrate right now. We're going to take a silent meditation, and then I'll pray. Gracious God, on this day, there's many eyes that have tears, many hearts that have hurts, souls that feel empty, and we're here together as the body of Christ to feel your presence. To not be ashamed to celebrate who we are and whose we are in you. That you keep reaching out to us. This particular time of the year, when many are going through emotional turmoil, a roller coaster of pain. We ask that you just embrace us all and lift us up and guide us and hold us together right now. 
Because we know our Lord and Savior is after us, reaching out to us, pulling us in, and speaking to our hearts that you don't have to turn any other place but to the one, this loving one that walks with us through each breath and step who can continue to anoint us from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. When we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> making that way and holding our hands and giving that hug that we need. Yes, there are praises. But on this day, we stand in the gap for so many in this world that just feel they are unloved. And we ask that our humanness is enough to go out into this world and let them see you through our words, our actions, that we can share this love that you have put into this world. We know that we serve a risen Savior. And we stand through resurrection power to guide us and strengthen us. Hold us tight this day. And now together let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll have the Advent meeting by the New
Dear God, you are present by your spirit to defend us against our enemies, sin, and fear. You take away our mistakes of the past, so we will not be afraid of judgment. You renew us in your love, rejoicing over each person you have made into a new creation. You give us great joy. Help us share your love with our family, friends, and neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, you draw together the whole human family and lead us to home. We look forward to the day when we will pray for you with all the people who love the earth. Amen. The Old Testament lesson this morning can be found in Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 through 6, and you may find that in your pew Bible on pages 609 and 610. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that, in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted, sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. For great in your midst is the, is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. Fred. Happy birthday. How you doing? Oh, wow. What a blessing. Um, now, that song is probably the sermon in itself uh, for this particular Sunday, this joy. Thank you, Holly, for being liturgist today. Also, Scott and Mike for doing uh, Sunday school today. God bless each and every one of you all for being here. What a blessing it is on this day, this celebration that we have to put joy in the context of this season. So we've gone through hope, we've gone through love, but this particular element to our lives is one that sometimes feels is a distant, and when you say joy, we get joy in many other things, but this particular joy, as you heard, the center of my joy is Jesus. Dear gracious God, be with us today, walk with us as we go through this word that it speaks to our hearts and gives us the nourishment that we need to move in this Advent season with thanksgiving, celebration, and praise with hallelujah shouts. Lift us up right now in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. As you heard in this text and from Isaiah, and one of the things when we think about the Old Testament, a lot of people think, well, there was never any happiness, it was never any gladness, it was always pain. Or this relationship with God seems fragmented. And so in these words, and this is so interesting, you will say in that day, I will give you thanks, O oh Lord. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy. You will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud. And sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is sometimes a, a pace that we try to achieve in many things through our humanness, and that's the word joy. But there is something that is remarkable in this particular text from the book of Isaiah. This thing of giving thanks, giving praise. See, sometimes we do that when somebody does something for us. And you hear that, thank you. But when God is working in your life, there needs to be that praise, that joy, so that others will hear that God is doing things. God is not against us. And in this text, when God moves away the anger and says, no, you matter where you are at, what you are doing, how you are living, you matter. And even though in the tears and even though we see certain things that are going on in life, God wants you to know that you still have joy with God. And we have to see that in such a compelling way. Notice the words that say the wells. The wells of salvation, not a drop, but the wells of salvation. 
And in salvation, that is our well-being, that is our wholeness, that God wants to be in the right relationship with us. And for us to have a right relationship with one another, rule Jesus Christ. And so we look at what is the joy that we seek in life. And it is a, a hard thing that many people have different types of joy that they experience. Now somewhere in the world right now, there's some kids singing a song. And this song has been one that many have sung. A lot of you all probably know the words by heart. You remember the song, I got joy, 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 joy? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Now, the thing about that song that is so compelling, that it teaches children, it teaches us, a direction, a place, not necessarily I have joy in my bank account, but I have joy where? Down in my heart. And see, this is an interesting thing because something about those lyrics that are so fascinating that when you talk about the word heart, and you know how we use that when somebody's talking... Just get to the heart of the matter. Well, the heart of the story is this. So joy down in my heart. That's a joy from our Lord. See, Wesley was very clever in looking at things and saying, you know what? Because you hear this statement a lot. But John Wesley was smart to think about, it's about what God is doing with you every second you breathe, every step you take. And this is where we find the statement that I have a joy that the world didn't give me, and the world can't take it away. I have a joy down in my heart. Now, when we think about this Advent season and we think about joy, how it penetrates a lot of conditions and families, and we think about how we want joy in this world. Later in life, give a brain teaser here. How many of you all remember the group Three Dog Night? Whoa! <laughs> Joy to the world. All the boys and girls. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Amen. Amen. See, we got this joy thing down. And you have to have somewhere to clip this in, make an attachment. Always say that we need some type of flow chart when you can't find it. And this is why it's always compelling that people thought the Old Testament has a doom and gloom story. So why would there be prophets talking about this relationship with God and feeling of joy in an oppressive oh. time and hurt and pain and even in our lives right now? How do we get up? Because sometimes we feel, well, if I just had this, the joy would be upon me. But it's the same joy that God can bring into your life. The same joy that God wants you to have. And see, this is why in these short verses that we ought to be hooping and hollering and saying hallelujah for the fact that God wants to make a way for you to feel this joy. When everybody else has left you, when everybody else has counted you out, when you need to know and recognize the power and the salvation of God working constantly, not last year, not last week, but right now. 
to know that God is with you. But here's the unique thing that gets overlooked in this text. How hard is it to look for God when you're in pain? Sorry about that. There you go. How hard is it to see God and to understand the power of God's joy? You know, there was and is, I call this artist, this intuitive human being, an urban mystic. How many of you all know the name of Stevie Wonder? <laughs> and this is an interesting thing. For someone that has been blind, but for someone to have an intuitive pathway into life, into a way that we live, that you would think he had physical eyes that were working to see what is going on in life. But through his heart, that Stevie Wonder writes. And it's so interesting that in one of his most classic um, albums that was a double platinum and it was also a double album, Songs in the Key of Life, he wrote a song that was called Joy Inside My Tears. And I thought about this song, I kept thinking about this song because sometimes we see people say I got tears of joy, but no, he's talking about joy inside my tears. You, God, can bring this and brought this into a place where I'm hurting, into a place where I'm crying, into a place where the pain is so overwhelming that only you did, but nobody else could. That you brought some joy inside my tears. Don't you know that in this season of Advent, that it's more than just we celebrate and go through emotions. That we have a celebration that this world needs to know that we have such a powerful God that continues to be with us and to lift us up on a rainy day. That even in your deepest hurt and pain, that God is still stepping in there and saying, not only do I have hope, not only do I have love for you, but I got joy for you, who you are. And you got to clench and hold on to this joy on the bad days. It's not a thing that you get and try to get on a bus and get a transfer to another street. This is a constant running 24 hours, seven days a week, that joy is with you. And we have to shout out aloud. We have to let the world know that there is joy in God. Because when we stop being the cheerleaders on the battlefield, then people will look around and say, you don't have any joy and you go to church. So why should I go? If you come at home like that and you don't have a glimpse of happiness, then how does this thing about God work in your life? What's this thing about salvation? Being, well, kept your wholeness. And see, this is our challenge in our humanness. That joy is powerful. Sometimes we look at people who are going through some tragedies, and you know what? And there's a lot of people going through a lot of stuff. And I feel and pray for them, and that's why I always say we have to stand in the gap for those that are going through a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. But one of the things 
that we have to cling to is when you give somebody something, you care, some nurturing, that human touch, where you reach out to, to them. Guess what you're doing? You're doing what God wants to do to you. And sometimes we forget, why would we want to do anything opposite of what God does? It's an amazing thing that we go into this life and we have to realize the power of joy. Now yesterday we saw a glimpse of joy in action. And that's why I've always said, Redeemer, you are so powerful and you don't know it because there's not enough words to express what's going around in these walls of this church. It's so much love that people come in here and when we just say certain words, it's welcoming, it's hospitality, and it's not even being on guard for the fact that we can say, well, I went into that church and, you know, won't go back there. And see, it's not that we, as they used to say this when I was growing up, it's not that we put on our Sunday best just on Sunday. We're doing it every day. That those doors are open. That people come in here. Because you never know. That thin line, that thread that might be required to keep somebody still believing. I want to share something before I close. When you think about happiness, salvation, our well-being, this Advent season where we tap into God's joy. And I know it's a hard thing to ask you to do that. Sometimes that's why I always say you have to have a sanctified imagination to get past just what we do, what we think is joy. Like when we get a credit on a bill, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> <clears throat> but there is something I want to read to you, and, and I would highly recommend this book. It's called... Lasting Happiness in a Changing World, The Book of Joy. Now this was written by the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. That they collaborated on something. And they think there's many phases of joy. But one is generosity. We are filled with joy. I think that almost all of us are surprised how our joy is enhanced when we make someone else happy. You know, you go to town, you've gone to do some, uh, some shopping, and when you get back home, you have a bunch of flowers that they weren't expecting that you gave out. The Archbishop laughs and says, our book says that it is in giving that we receive. Think about that. It is in giving that we receive. So I would hope that people would recognize in themselves that it is when we are closed in on ourselves that we tend to be miserable. It is when we grow in self-forgetfulness in a remarkable way, I mean we discover that we are filled with joy. So, don't you know it's a blessing when we got a loving God that wants to give you joy every second you breathe? Along the way, along the way to make sure that when this world is cold down here, when you're not getting treated right the way you're supposed to, that God is making the way for you, that you got somebody in your corner. You got God in your corner. You got the Holy Spirit on one side. You got Jesus on the other. 
And they are there to make sure that you have joy. Shouts of joy. Hallelujah praise of joy. On a cloudy day, the joy is still with you, flowing through you. And it is our goal to make sure that everybody we come in contact with sees an element of God's love and that superior joy that God brings to them. My daughter questioned me, uh, God, we went to Sam's Club. And as I was coming out, the Salvation Army was ringing the bell. So I put some money in. And then the second time we were at Santa's Club, put some money in. And then we were over at the post office. I had to mail something. And I put some money in. She said, you do that all the time? I said, if you only knew what this was doing, in some way, some small fashion, what this will do for someone or gives them the capability to do for someone. Amazing that they're called the Salvation Army. That is the absolute, absolute truth. Amen. We are God's warriors for Christ. We're here to make sure that people got hope, they have love, that they have joy. I know it's a hard task and it's a lot of stuff that gets on that battlefield that sometimes we're like, ooh, I need to take a breather. But God knows what's in your heart because Jesus is the center of our joy. Mm. And so it is with your love and your connection that joy is in your life. Joy can take you from A to Z. Joy can bring you out of the clutches. Joy will have you have a wonderful remembrance, not of the bad times, but the time that you had, period, with someone. Above all, joy inside your tears. Amen. Amen. All right, now, now is our time for our offertory. Lord, we have come to this place from a world of demands and schedules. We have sought hope and peace and have found them here. Now we seek the inner joy that only your presence can bring to our lives. Open our hearts and our spirits to your love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
together, let us say the prayer of dedication. Lord, we bring these gifts to you. Thank you for all the ways you have healed and enriched our lives. May these gifts be used in service to others. In Jesus' name, amen. for our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, on page 89 in the United Methodist Hymn. and just a joyous time together as well as some refreshments. So God, we ask that you bless that food, the hands that prepared it, and to walk with each and every one that is here today. Um, the day is at hand, the Savior draws near. Let us feast and let our taste be king. Lest the cup be filled and left unpoured. Lest the bread be baked and left unbroken. You may remain seated and to have a moment of meditation as we hear our recessional song. Amen. Amen.